What's up everybody? It's time for another Tech Check Tuesday. And today we're going to be taking a closer look at the DJI Mavic Air and real world battery life. And why do I say real world? Well, because DJI advertises on their website, you can expect 21 minutes from the battery, but that's in a laboratory environment under very controlled conditions. Now there is a plethora of factors that can affect your battery life, but the biggest factor is going to be how you fly. Are you cruising around in sport mode? Or maybe you're just zipping around in P mode. Maybe you have the sensors off. Maybe you have the sensors on. Or maybe you're doing some cinematic shooting where you're doing a combination of all of those. You need to know exactly what to expect. And in my true fashion, that's exactly what I do. So I'm gonna test this thing in every way possible to give you guys the best case scenario of what you can expect in all sorts of real world conditions. So first of all, I'm going to do a hover test. This could also simulate a situation where you might be doing a long exposure like night filming or maybe like a hyperlapse or something like that. Now, I really wanted to do a hyperlapse so you could have something cool to look at while the drone is just sitting there hovering, but it's a little windy today. So for entertainment value while you're watching, I'm going to recite from memory the first 20 minutes or so of Star Wars A New Hope. Just kidding. Okay, to hell with that. That's super boring. I'm just going to continue flying and then show you guys the stats at the end of the video so you can see how long I stayed up in the air until I got to 20% battery. So this is the Mavic Air in regular mode, all obstacle avoidance on. I'm just going to fly laps around the lake until I get to 20% and see how long that is. You really shouldn't be flying your battery below 20% anyway. In normal mode, flying laps around the lake here, I think I got a, roughly about 18 minutes. We'll get an exact number back at the studio, and I'm going to do the same exact test in sport mode. I'm going to fly as many laps as I can around this lake in sport mode until I get to 20% and then come home. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. So I don't know, man, that felt about like 
half the clock time of flying in regular mode. And it also felt like probably a good 10 to 20% less amount of travel time and distance as flying in regular mode, which is pretty consistent with my results with the Mavic Pro. All right, for this next bit of test, I'm gonna use the last few minutes of daylight to test something specific that you guys pointed out to me. I've heard from you guys that if you shut off the obstacle avoidance, some of you are saying that that's actually more efficient than traveling in normal mode with the sensors on and more efficient than traveling in sport mode. I'm a little skeptical and I'm going to do a full on test of that in a different episode, but I just thought I'd toss this in here as a bonus and just to see if there's any meat to those bones. So what do you know? You guys were right. With the sensors off, we did almost 17 minutes flat of airtime. We traveled 26,601 feet or 8.1 kilometers. That's a whole kilometer more and more than a half a mile more than we did in normal mode with the sensors on. You guys got it right. That's pretty incredible. So now it's the moment that I know I've been waiting for, taking this sucker outside and finally shooting some cinematics with it. We'll see how long the battery lasts now. Is that a drone in my pocket or am I just happy to see you? Or both. So recently you've seen a lot of videos of me playing around with the Mavic Air and testing out various different features. Today, I'm gonna actually be taking it out and do what it's intended to do, cinematic flying. And here's a tip, if you're flying in cold weather like I am today, keep your drone battery in your pants pocket close to your body, keep the battery nice and warm. If the battery gets too cold, your drone won't even launch.
So in that test, I noticed something a little curious, that the Mavic Air has a rate of descent that's significantly slower than the Mavic Pro. It takes it much longer to go up and come back down. In the situation there where I was flying over that rocky mountain, it was about 1,400 feet, and it took a couple minutes to get to that altitude. And then coming back down felt like it took almost twice as long. So keep that in mind and work it into your battery budget. I did notice that the Mavic Air felt a little more squirrely, and it was a little bit harder to get nice, smooth, fluid movements, but that's for a different episode. But this is all about battery life. And in this instance, I was able to stay up in the sky for about 15 minutes and 50 Seven seconds, which remind me a lot of back in the days of flying around my Phantom 3. I've been pretty spoiled with my Mavic Pro, which consistently gets me about 25 minutes of air time. So make sure that you've got a couple extra batteries with you because you're really going to need them. If you found any of this information useful, please do me a big old favor and mash the old thumbs up button. If you like what I do and want to make sure that you catch all of it, please subscribe to my channel. I'm doing Tech Check Tuesday just about every Tuesday. And I also do what I call drone ventures where I take my drone out hiking somewhere and fly around on a really cool destination. Check those out too. Of course, thank you all so much for watching. Have yourself an awesome day and we'll see you guys very soon.